Okay, this is uh, page one of the chapter two derivatives morning test review. Number one, uh, let h of t equal to f of g of t. Find h prime of one. Okay, so this is going to be a multiple uh, multi multi step problem. Um, to find h prime of one, we first need to find h prime of t. So h prime of t would requires to find the derivative of this function. And notice that this is f of g of t. So we have a composite function, function within another function. So if we want to find the derivative of a composite function, we're going to have to go through chain rule. So to recall, chain rule says uh, that we need to uh, evaluate the outer function's derivative, then multiply by the inside function's derivative. So the outside outer function is f prime. So f prime of g of t, we need to first find that, and then multiply it by g prime of t. So that's our rule, h prime of t is equal to f prime of g of t times g prime of t. Okay, so now we can uh, start uh, plugging in 1 in for the t values and see if we can use this diagram, this uh, uh, graph to help us evaluate um, uh, uh, to, uh, to find h prime of 1. All right, so uh, we're going to replace all the t with 1, so h prime of 1. G f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. Okay, so this is our next step. Now we're going to see what um, to see if we can use this uh, this graph to help us identify the values. All right, f prime of g of 1. So we first need to figure out what g of 1 is. Okay, so g of 1, um, that's going to be um, this uh, v-shaped function here. So g prime of one, sorry, uh, g of one is simply asking for what's the y value for the g function at one. So g of one is equal to one. All right, y value of one. So I can replace g of one with one. Okay. So now we're down to f prime of one times g prime of one. F prime of one is asking for what is the slope of the f graph at one. So what is the slope of the f graph? So here's the f graph. The slope of the f graph at 1 is um, we're going to assume, I know that uh, it's not very clear here, uh, we're going to assume that it takes on the slope uh, of this line okay, before it uh, curves. So um, if that's the case, uh, then the slope of this line is going to be right at 1. Okay, so f prime of 1 is equal to 1. I know that uh, it looks like this could be interpreted um, differently um, because, because of this curve. It could be, sorry, it could be a slope of 1 here, or it could be a slope of, um, this actually is 3. So um, I think in this case, um, both answers would probably be correct since this is not very clear. So you can either uh, have f prime of 1 to be either 1 or 3, um, just depending on how you interpret it. So... Okay, but normally it should be more clear than that. All right, g prime of 1, we're asking for what is the slope of the g graph at 1? So um, notice that this is a straight line, so whatever the slope is uh, at any point on this line will be the slope of um, g of 1, or g prime of 1. So we see the slope here, this is the slope of this line. Uh, if we just pick two points here, this is down 1 over 1, so slope of negative 1. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay. Okay, uh, number two, let z of t equals f of t times g of t, find z prime of 3. All right, so if we want to find z prime of 3, um, we have to essentially find the derivative of z first. So if we want to find z prime, notice that uh, these are two functions that are being multiplied together, so we have to go through product rule. So product rule says f prime g plus f g prime. So... Um, the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So we first evaluate the derivative correctly with uh, the appropriate uh, formula uh, for the given function. And then we can evaluate uh, z prime of 3. So now we're going to replace every t value with 3. So f prime of 3 times g of 3 plus f of 3 times g prime of 3. All right, so f prime of 3 we're uh, you're going to use uh, the graph to see if we can determine what is the slope of the f graph at 3. So the slope of f graph at 3, um, this is going to be a slope of 1. So here uh, we see this line. 
uh, segment here, down one over one, our best approximation is negative one. All right, g of three is simply asking for the y value at the g uh, at uh, when g is has an x value of three. So at three, um, g has a y value of one. Okay, plus f of three. So f of three is at a y value of three. Okay, g prime of three. So g prime of three. Uh, we see the slope of this line is always at 1, so up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, slope of 1. So uh, 1 replaces g prime of 3. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, 3 times 1 is 3, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Okay, number 3, consider the curve defined by uh, uh, this function here. So 2y cubed plus 6x squared y minus 12x squared plus 6y equals 1. Show that uh, the derivative is uh, uh, 4x, this is an x here, okay, 4x minus 2xy all over x squared plus y squared plus 1. So we're told what the answer is going to be. We should have to show the work um, to get from the original um, equation to um, the, this derivative equation. All right, so um, notice that the x and y's are mixed within each other. This is not explicitly defined in terms of um, as y equals um, in terms of x. So uh, we have to go through implicit differentiation. And then also we have to involve product rule because we see two variables um, that are uh, related to one another by multiplication. So we have to go through product rule. So with implicit, we're going to find the derivative of each term. And when we come across the derivative that involves y, we have to attach a dy dx. OK, so 2y cubed, let's start here. So the derivative for 2y cubed is 6y squared. We just, involve, uh, uh, we just involved uh, the derivative uh, for the variable y. So we have to attach dy dx. OK, plus, now we're um, at a point where we're going to have to involve product rules because 6x squared and y are multiplied together so we have to involve product rules. So product rule says f prime g plus f g prime. So we're going to find the derivative of the first portion here. So 6x squared becomes 12x and then we keep the g function as is, so y, plus, okay, so now we're going to do f g prime. So we have f prime so this is f prime times g, and then we have f times g prime. So um, the original f function is, where the original uh, function, first function is 6x squared times the derivative of y. So the derivative of y is 1, but because we're involving y's derivative, we have to also include dy dx. Okay, so now we're, we've taken care of the first two, um, uh, 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 first two terms derivative. Now let's move on to the next term. So negative 12x squared. There's only one variable here. Uh, it should simply be negative 24x. We're not involving y's derivative, so we don't have, there's no need to attach a d y over dx. All right, next term, 6y. So the derivative for 6y is 6 times, becomes 6 times 1, right? The derivative of y is just 1. But we're involving y's derivative, so we have to attach dy dx. Okay, equals. Finally, don't forget the 1. Now. Uh, the tendency sometimes with students is to just include the one uh, like as if nothing changes. But remember, every term is being affected by this derivative procedure. So we have to also find the derivative for one. So the derivative for one is equal to zero. All right, so now we found the derivative. We just have to uh, factor and isolate the dy dx. So uh, what we can do now uh, is we can... Um, put all the terms that have a dy dx, um, uh, we can group them together, and then all the terms that don't have dy dx, we can just go ahead and move to the other side of the equation, um, just so that we can begin to isolate the dy dx. So uh, the 6y squared dy dx, the 6x squared dy dx, the 6 dy dx, all stay on the left side, and then the 12xy and the 24x will move to the right side of the equation. So we have to change signs. Right, so negative 24x becomes 24, positive 24x. Positive 12xy becomes negative 12xy. And then each of these terms has a dy dx, so we can factor that dy dx out. 
and then the parentheses will be the, um, the terms um, after we've removed the dy dx for each of them. So 6y squared plus 6x squared plus 6. And finally, to get dy dx by itself, we're going to take um, uh, this expression and move it, divide it to the other side of the equation. So now we have 24x minus 12xy all over 6y squared plus 6x squared plus 6. Uh, this is Okay, so we're getting close to what we're trying to find, which is this dy dx in, in terms of um, uh, uh, represented um, here. But notice that these numbers are smaller, so maybe we can factor a bit more. So if we factor a 12 um, out of uh, the numerator and then factor out, well, actually, we can factor out a 2 uh, from each of the terms as well as the bottom here. Actually, more than that, right? Sorry, we can factor out a 6 um, from every term. So if we factor out a 6, I'm going to be left with uh, 4x minus 2xy. And then if I factor out a 6 here, we're left with uh, y squared plus uh, x squared plus 6. So uh, the step before this would have a 6 in front. step before this would have a 6 as a factor. And then notice the 6 will then uh, cancel and reduce to leave us with uh, an expression that will match what we're uh, what the problem is asking for us to find.